2023 is bringing us tons of new first-person shooter games for all the major gaming platforms. Now, we've got 15 here today that we're really looking forward to, so let's talk about them. Starting off with number 15, of course, it's Redfall. This is Arkane's newest game. These are the people behind Dishonored, Prey, uh, more recently Deathloop, and with Redfall, they're going in a bit of a different direction. You're in a small New England town hunting vampires and monsters in some fun four-player cooperative action. All of the characters have different traits and skills and abilities, and to be honest, we're really just looking forward to it because of the developers involved, Arkane. We're still curious to see how exactly they're gonna provide their specific spin on this. They're very creative with the games they make, where a four-player co-op monster shooter sounds pretty typical stuff. I'm expecting it to feel different because it's arcane. Also, it's cool that there's vampires involved. As you guys know, I always talk about how there should be more vampires in games, and I am pro-vampires in this. So we're looking forward to seeing what they got with it. Now, next over at number 14, IGI Origins. This is actually a prequel to 2000's Project IGI, and it's this tactical first-person shooter. Yeah, I mean, we're big fans of stealth games, and we're always excited to see more like this, especially like a tactical military one. Can't help but get Splinter Cell vibes from this. I mean, it's being developed by Antimatter Games, who brought us Rising Storm 2 Vietnam, and have contributed to the Killing Floor series. That checks out to me. Sounds enough like they know what they're doing. Uh, with this, like many other military stealth games, you can take and should take the stealthy approach, or you can go in guns blazing. You know, you probably know the drill with games like this by now, but honestly, there doesn't seem to be much that Antimatter matter is doing different here to push the genre forward, but if it ain't broke, I guess don't fix it, because I mean, either way, it's like a new stealth tactical military shooter, and we're about it, because you don't see a ton of these every day now. Next over at number 13, we have Ripout. This is a co-op horror shooter where you'll be fighting your way through a procedurally generated ship that's infested with these gross looking mutants. Now the enemies are actually reconfigurable, so bigger mutants will attach smaller mutants to their body to make themselves more powerful, which could be a fun way to really change it up a bit. More intelligent enemy encounters, and especially in such creative sci-fi ways like this, we're just about. And while you're exploring these ships and mowing down mutants, you'll be collecting loot that you'll use to customize your character and your weapons and uh, well, toying around with different character classes to seemingly find a really good mix for your own play style. There's a lot of stuff here that is checking boxes, but their spin on it seems like it might be cool. This is actually being published by 3D Realms who have been around uh, forever. So it's always nice to see them pop up from time to time and especially with a creative looking one like this. We hope it's good. Next over at number 12, we have a game called Luna Abyss. Now this one may have not been on your radar, but you'll probably be glad now that it is because I mean, look at it. This thing is absolutely wild looking from the graphics to the environment and enemy design. There's just some really unsettling sci-fi horror going on here. And that's exactly what this game is. It's a narrative driven first person action adventure game. And it's all about trippy cosmic horror, but they're building it as like a fast paced bullet hell style game. So expect it to be pretty intense and challenging and not just this gorgeous thing. It seems like it might have the gameplay chops to back it up with a bunch of cool guns and abilities and enemies that hurl all kinds of glowing orbs at you. Kind of looks like Returnal, but in first person. And I think that's a good thing. This one doesn't have a release date yet. It's just billed as coming soon. We're really hoping we get to see this one in 2023. Next over at number 11, we have Amnesia, The Bunker. This looks like a big change up for the series. I mean, we've had some sequels to Amnesia, but nothing really topped the absolute smash hit surprise that was the original that kind of ignited an indie horror craze for a lot of people. Now, the landscape has changed. Things are very different. Uh, and with Amnesia, The Bunker, we don't know too much about it yet, other than the fact that we're including it on this list because there is a gun, yes. Gun confirmed, you can have a gun and probably shoot some creepy ghouls, but this is all speculation. The trailer was short, they showed the character use a gun, so it counts as a first person shooter. All right, we're cheating a little bit, but there you go. Next over at number 10, we have Destiny 2 Lightfall. This is Destiny 2's next big expansion, and this one seems like a big deal and a pretty big change up, especially visually. Now, you might be watching and you don't play Destiny, and you might even go and comment and say that it's a dead game. I'm not really a big Destiny fan either, but there are tons of people that still absolutely love the hell out of this game, and it seems like they're gearing up to be pretty excited for Lightfall. It's gonna come with a new location, a new subclass, a bunch of stuff to do, and a bunch of loot 
and stuff in terms I don't understand as a non-Destiny player. Complicated stuff, but it seems like people are gonna be getting what they want with this one. They won't have to wait too much longer because it's dropping February 28th, 2023. Next over at number nine, we have Atomic Heart. Now, we've mentioned this one in a lot of lists. This is essentially a kind of open environment, uh, first person shooter adventure, heavily inspired by Bioshock, but like with an alternate sci-fi Soviet twist. You're fighting off against all sorts of weird mechanical creatures with cool guns and strange otherworldly abilities. And a heavy dose of melee weapons too. Uh, the visual style for this thing is incredibly unique. That's what initially caught our eye. And we're hoping that the gameplay chops really back it up. Still, it just seems incredibly unique. They've been crafting this thing for a long time and it's dropping soon and we're excited to see what comes of it. Next over at number eight, we have Warhammer 40K Bolt Gun, which to me looks like it's just straight up bringing back the fun to first person shooting. This is just an over the top arcade style shooter with cool graphics, lots of gore, and just some old school sensibilities set in, of course, the Warhammer universe with their weapons, their enemies, and stuff like that. I mean, we just love the whole craze of things inspired by 90s shooters. I think Dusk really kicked that off. The gunplay just looks really intense and satisfying here, especially if you're an old school fan. I actually did not know about this one until we started doing research for this list, and I, I'm glad I did. I, I wishlisted it immediately. Next over at number seven, we have Payday 3. Yes, which believe it or not, it was announced and it's slated technically for 2023. Unfortunately, we don't really know too much about it. Other than that, Starbreeze is once again developing it. It's being published by Prime Matter and it seems like it's gonna be a New York setting, which is very cool. These games tend to live on for a while. So we're hoping that developers really take their time and make this one rock solid because people keep coming back to Payday for a reason. Robbing banks and doing heists is just a ton of fun in video games. I legally have to say that I, I mean specifically in video games. Next over at number six, we have Dead Island 2, which is a game that is finally releasing. It was announced in 2014. It jumped developers, it went dark for a while, and now it's back in full glory with a cool sense of style and lots of creative zombie murdering, all in first person. Hopefully this can do enough to stand out from the horde <laughs> of other zombie games that have really kicked off since the original Dead Island. This one takes place in California, so you're murdering zombies amongst beautiful palm trees and sunset beaches. And from what we've seen, the little gameplay trailer and stuff, it does seem like it's a lot of fun. Is it worth waiting like almost 10 years for? I don't know, but but hey, if it's fun, that's all that matters. As of right now, it's dropping in April. Next over at number five, we have Robocop Rogue City. Now this is from the people behind the more recent Terminator Resistance, which wasn't a perfect game, but it did a good job using the license, you know, the source material of Terminator. And we're hoping that they do that again with Robocop here. We know it's going to be in first person. It's going to be about you upholding your prime directives as Alex Murphy. And uh, as a diehard Robocop fan, I'm really excited about this one, but also really nervous because there's like a little bit of weirdness to Robocop and some cool satire that sometimes goes over people's heads and I would really like to see them integrate that into this game. But on the other side, Robocop is just a cool robot that shoots bad guys and that's fun too. So honestly, it's a win-win as long as the shooting mechanics are fun and if it feels faithful to the world of Robocop, which is a pretty incredible and unique one. Robocop used to have a bunch of video games, so you know what? It's about time he makes a comeback. Next over at number four, we have Crime Boss, Rock Hay City. This is a first person shooter, kind of like action movie style game focused around turf wars and co-op gameplay. You're going to be able to play it solo, but it seems like the emphasis is on just like crazy blasting mayhem in the city, doing heists and seemingly just some real Grand Theft Auto style stuff. But you're playing as a guy trying to become the crime boss of this city, but you're gonna be dealing with a colorful cast of characters featuring Michael Madsen, Chuck Norris, and a bunch of others. It's really cool to see them go for the whole 90s thing. The game is set in the 90s. It's supposed to go for 90s nostalgia, and it's featuring so many famous people from the 90s that they're kind of bringing back, which is cool. We need to see more of this game, to be honest. It could just be kind of like a generic crime first person shooter, but it's got a little bit of a flair to it that we're keeping our eye on it. This one, as of right now, is going to be dropping in March. Now down to number three, we have Witchfire. This is a dark fantasy first person shooter where you're gonna be using guns and spells to hunt down this Witch of the Black Sea. The story setup is actually pretty cool. It's this war against witches where the Vatican decides to resort to forbidden pagan magic to create immortal witch hunters to hopefully help with this battle. The gunplay, I mean, if you see it here, it seems tight. 
and spells seem powerful and fun to cast with all the shooting. And it's all happening in what seems to be like this kind of medieval world, which looks very cool. Guns and knights and witches? Yeah, I'd say sign us up. Uh, this is the next game from the development studio, The Astronauts, uh, whose last game was The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, believe it or not. You know, it's a very different game if you've played that, but with creative leads from Painkiller and Bulletstorm working on this, we can at least guess that it'll be fun to shoot, fun to play at least. So we've been keeping our eye on this one since it was initially revealed. Now down to number two, of course, we have Starfield. What more can we say about Starfield at this point? You either are really excited for it or extremely skeptical. This is Bethesda's next big first person RPG set in space where you're gonna be able to create your own ship, land on randomly generated planets, build your own base, mine your own resources, go to planets with big cities, do quests, join factions, do Bethesda RPG stuff. The jury's still out in terms of like, we'd still like to see a little bit more gameplay. We've only seen little bits here and there, but if they pull it off, it could be really, really really exciting. The potential is wild. For me, the thing I'm looking forward to is just seeing Bethesda do something different. They've been on this on and off Elder Scrolls Fallout thing for a while, and they've decided to make something completely different. Totally new IP with its own lore, its own story, so I want to see what that's about. Starfield has been delayed many, many times, but as of right now, we know we're finally getting it in the first half of 2023. Now down to number one, we have Stalker 2, Heart of Chernobyl. Now we're really looking forward to this one just because we're a big fan of the classic games. Uh, they were a really good like double A style game that were just really unique PC first person games. There was nothing really like them. And with Stalker 2, from what we've seen, it just seems like a graphically incredible, high tension first person shooter with mystery, science, and brutality. It's another post-apocalyptic story, but it's going to be non-linear with complete immersive sim game gameplay that looks to probably be pretty challenging, but also pretty spooky. The gameplay videos we've seen here so far are awesome. And really, uh, we don't know too much more what to say. We still would want to see more gameplay videos, but this game looks pretty sick. And we're looking forward to finally checking it out sometime in 2023. We've also got some bonus games worth mentioning for you. The first, Starship Troopers Extermination. Hopefully this one can really live up to the awesomeness that was the original Starship Troopers movie and uh, everything it was based upon. Also, the System Shock remake. We're hoping we see it this year because uh, a remake of a legendary first person shooter, sci-fi sim hybrid could be really, really exciting. And also, Outpost Infinity Siege. This looks like a really ambitious hybrid between first-person shooter and RTS that goes full sci-fi and all-out warfare. We hope this one's good. But there you have it. Those are 15 new first-person shooter games for 2023 that we're really looking forward to. Of course, things get delayed, so be sure to double-check on release dates, but it seems like it's going to be a good year. So if you learned about a game or two, clicking a like button's all you got to do to help us out. We would really appreciate that. And of course, if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.